Good afternoon, all. This is Spice with Joseph, founder of Hamilton Black Film Festival. Today, I'm with uh, a talented film producer, Saint. He's the producer and director of uh, the movie Because We Are. Uh, you are welcome to the show today, Saint. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. So, today we're going to talk about your film uh, Because We Are. But before then, I want the audience to take a look at the trailer. Hey, what up, Dan? Chill, son. What to? Hey, yo, you wanna pay him? <laughs> you ain't got money like that, bro. <laughs> so, tell us more about it. Um, so, Officer Greg Connors, um, he is, he represents the, um, the, I guess he's supposed to represent um, what would, what we've come to kind of realize the bad apples in the police department. Um, sometimes there's these officers, not all, but there are some officers that allow the power to really um, get to them and they become very egotistical. And as you see throughout the film, um, there was a lot of things brought up about his past, things that he did. Um, we touched on his marriage and his relationships. And sometimes with these type of officers, it's not only what they do on duty, but it even spills into their lifestyle and their character um, when they're not with their badge. And so Greg Connors is one of those individuals that you see throughout the film that has a lot of skeletons in his closet. And um, we take him on this roller coaster, roller coaster ride of just a viewer on a roller coaster ride of just who he really is as a person and how sometimes the message is that sometimes these are people that are put in position with power, with weapons, um, and they're put in position to serve the people, but they themselves, you know, need a lot of work, you know, done on themselves. And so Greg Connors is that person. So I saw it in the movie book because when he arrested the guy, put him back of the car, he never, he, he didn't even, you know, read his rights to him or tell him the, the reason yeah. why he's arrested, you know, yeah. he was just there. So, I, there's one thing I take out here. I think the guy he arrested is, is a comedian. He should be a good comedian. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. he was leaving when he, at last, when 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 uh, the, the the guy, the voiceover came that was taunting the police officer. Yeah. He, he already asked him to release the kid, all right? Yeah. So when he was leaving, <laughs> he just put in some jokes, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, <laughs> can I take the handcuff with me? You know, that was, that was. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was uh, that was uh, good. Yeah, let's move to the Franklin family because their yeah, their story is so centered here because it's so mm -hmm. sensitive somehow. Okay, the father, you know, he was sitting down there. Did you play the dad or no, no? <laughs> um, that was Adrian Wallace. Adrian Wallace. Yeah, yeah. Good, good. You know, he was he was right on. You know. Yeah, yeah. His, his yeah. dominion. He played that role so you know so perfect. You know. Sitting down there, the daughter walks in. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, because that is going to be a lot of people is going to relate to that, you know, mm -hmm. because people want to know more about that. You, as the writer, you know, there's something good inside you, you know, you want to express this. Can you a little bit hint on it? Let the audience know much about it. Um, the so relationship like, between the dad and the uh, Mr. Yes. and the daughter, uh, Leah, yeah. So, um, um, so Adrian Wallace, actually, Adrian, who played the father, he is actually the script writer as well. So he wrote the script um, for the film. I assisted with it, but uh, he kind of came up with uh, a lot of the um, writing. And with um, um, the Franklin family, um, it was a, a thing where it's, you know, a typical, you know, black father um, who is very, you know, uh, tough, um, a stern father who understands like raising young black kids. Yes. 
right? It's very difficult in this day and age. So he just wants his daughter to, you know, go down the right path. And at some point in time, we don't show that part of the story, but at some point in time, he feels like he failed and not because his daughter is doing anything illegal or is um, doing anything wrong, but simply because she's gay. And it's a lifestyle that he was raised yes. to not agree with and not accept. And because of him finding that out, his relationship with his daughter becomes very tense and severed, which also then starts to deteriorate the relationship with him and his wife, right? And it kind of creates a dynamic within the family where you have this father that doesn't agree with the lifestyle of his daughter. Yeah. And because of that, it tears the family apart. I saw, I saw the world that happened. The, the wife was, you know, both of them was in a situation. I, I, I don't know. It's not a situation they cause. It's something that just happened, you know. This is something you cannot really take control of, you know. Yes. And so yes. Uh, I think over time they'll get over it. But the mom that was there, you know, she's my daughter, whatever, you know. But the dad's still holding back, you know, like, yes. you know, what will people think about me? You know, how how we black sometimes we want to yes. have a perfect family you know yes. but i didn't say that, that that she's not perfect somehow culturally yes. but this is something it's not of our own doing this is something that occurred to her you know so you can't take that away from her but uh, you know and but the yes. father didn't understand that but i think the mother was uh, was always there for her yeah so yes. let's talk about emilio the guy Yes, yes, yes. You know, Jacob. <laughs> he played Jacob, right? Yes. You know, I, I like, I just like his demeanor, his character. You know, yes. his acting is so raw, so natural. You yes. know, he just play along. You know, you will never. T he, both of them are friends. They are good friends. They are not boyfriend and girlfriends, but yes. they can relate things. You know, they yes. can open up to one another. You know, and so that was great. So tell us, how did you cast uh, Jacob? Um. So we had did um, some open open casting call, yes. Um, and uh, so he had came in, and actually, um, he wasn't the original Jacob we had in mind. Yes. So after we got some self tapes, there was another um, gentleman. His name slips in my mind right now. Who, based on his self tape. Right. And sorry, not his self tape, his demo. We thought he was going to be the perfect fit. And oddly enough, um, when, when we brought the different um, potential Jacobs in, the guy who we thought would have been the perfect fit, he didn't do as well of a job convincing us in the um, audition. But Emilio, we weren't really expecting much from him and he just blew us away. I remember that day, uh, he, 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 he cried, he did an even, we made him do some other stuff. He did a Denzel Washington uh, monologue. Yes. And I remember him leaving the room and we never gave him the impression while um, he was in the room, but I remember him leaving the room and me telling uh, my partner and my assistant, the minute he left, I'm like, he's the one. Like, he convinced me immediately. Yes. He is an amazing actor, and he's one of the guys that, you know, has been just, like, amazing to watch. And I talk to him all the time, and I'm just really, like, um, championing him. I think he has such a high upside. He's very diverse, and he just really became one with the character and just did an amazing job at playing Jacob. I think the the first you know the first scene when he, when he was running away when the cops was chasing them when the, when they shoplift from the, the yes shoe store yeah. when he finally stopped and faced the officer you know yeah I, yeah, yeah he was you know he was just so confident right yeah it, you know uh, like Leah. I was thinking, you know, like this is not where you came from. Like this is this is Canada, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he was, you know, 
He realized that uh, the Canadians, you know, he said something, you are a Canadian cop, you won't do something like that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so, yeah. so he was right on, you know? Yeah. But the cops as well, you know? Yeah. So the, what I like about this is that he talks about a lot of things that the title, because we are, it reflects everything that's the story, you know? You have to really watch it be, to understand it, all right? So, mm -hmm. so uh, I, I love the film, you know? I'll be telling people, go and watch this movie, uh, yeah. because we are. You yeah. know, it's a great film, it's well written, and I'm speaking today with the talented writer, producer, and director, uh, Sent, uh, yeah. the producer of uh, Because We Are. This movie, it came, when it came to our theater, everybody talks about it, you know? Wow. I, I, I want everyone to go and watch this film. You know what we're talking about. It's yeah. something that happens in certain of our societies, everyday life, what we go through in life. You you watch this movie, you can relate to any family, people you yeah. know. So it's so soothing. And what and, and what I and, and and sorry to cut you, but what I wanted to also highlight, yes. and I'm not sure if you got it or the viewers who have watched it got it was in particular, as you mentioned, Emilio's character, Jacob. Yes. We wanted to, we, we, we didn't want to show him as a perfect kid. No. We wanted to show him as a kid who, just like most teenagers, you know, make mistakes, get into trouble, sometimes do the, he's shoplifting, you know, he's yes. using, so we didn't want to make him the perfect kid. The point yes. we were trying to show was that Sometimes it's unfair because kids that 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 don't look like us, they're allowed to make mistakes. That's they're right. allowed to, you know, get into trouble and they don't get punished to the extent of the law. They're still allowed to move on outside of their teenage years and still, you know, live a productive life. Whereas a lot of times teenagers that come from rough beginnings like Jacob who make mistakes, get caught shoplifting and stuff, their life is completely thrown away by society because they just write them off after one strike. And that's what we were trying to show with Jacob. We didn't want to make him um, a perfect teenager and make it seem like, okay, um, um, he wasn't doing anything wrong. We wanted to make him do something wrong, but it was more about, we wanted to showcase how the different treatment is versus a black kid doing something wrong. And if it was another race doing something wrong, they may just get a spank on the hand yeah. and they're about their business. And that's what we are trying to showcase. I think his character really fit in because you allow him to grow as, you know, mm -hmm. so natural. That's why everything fits in. It makes the things really, you know, the way he plays the film. So let's talk about Leah Franklin. Yeah. You know, there was a time she stood for herself, speaking to the dad, you know. Yeah. You know, she was listening to the father and everything. And then when the dad was raising his hand, says, you try it, you know, and there she stood for herself. And so can you explain that? Why did you put that in the scene? Just, you know, there's a reason for that. Yeah, so um, we wanted to, uh um create a moment where for the purpose of the story um i'm not sure if it's okay on this platform to share how the film ends yes but we needed to create a uh, obvious divide between father and daughter so that people would not expect the ending if you understand what I mean. That's right, that's right. Okay? Yeah. So yeah. We, we deliberately created that confrontation between her and her father and made sure, we didn't want to show her either as a weak individual. That's we wanted right, to show yeah. her as, you know, especially being that her character was gay. We didn't want to um, show her as, um, somebody who just necessarily means she's weak, right? And again, the purpose of that confrontation was to really show that this father and daughter's relationship is pretty much reached a point of maybe non-repair. 
And so that by the time the film comes around to the end and we see how it ends and who avenged, you know, it's, it's meant to be that pleasant surprise that even though this father seemingly um, was against his daughter's lifestyle, lifestyle yeah. he, under, he undoubtedly loved his daughter because look at the extreme he went to. You can tell, you know, yeah. you know. So that's what we were trying to um, get across. You know, both brothers love her. Now she's loved by many. You know, her friends. Yes. You know. Yes. So the film, uh, because we are, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm speaking with the writer, producer, and director. Sent uh, producer because we are. The film is a great film. Go and watch it. You you know what we're talking about. Watch that film. You take it through a lot of push, everything we go through in society. So natural, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I want to thank you for coming to the show. Before we end it, I want you to give a shout out to your crew. Yeah. Oh man, there's just so many people. I, I don't even think I can remember everybody's name. But first of all, you know, I want to shout out Adrian Wallace. Um, he um, wrote the script. I came to him with my vision and the concept on what I was trying to create. And he definitely helped me put it all together by writing an amazing, amazing script. So shout out to him, shout out to my production team, um, Jesse um, from Die Fire Films, amazing cinematographer, um, uh, another Daryl Wong, another amazing cinematographer. And I just had an amazing crew of um, sound and and PAs and 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 even just the crew, the crew. Um, sorry, the cast. Um, everybody who played um, a role in this film: Shanna, um, Armogen, who played Monique's mom; uh, Mimi, Jacob, who was uh, played by Emilio; um, um, Robert uh, Mudeng, who played one of the police officers. Um, so many people, I don't want to um, miss anybody, but I definitely want to shout out the cast, the crew, everybody involved, my wife, who was also a co-producer and helped me produce this project. And it's out right now, actually. It just streamed yesterday, August 3rd. Um, so it's out right now on streaming platforms. And if you haven't seen it, definitely go check it out because we are um, amazing film. And it talks about some of the relationships between the black community and police officers and it's it's a telling film thanks for coming to the show saint you know uh nice having you you know i'm pais is also a founder hamilton black film festival at the moment we are people submitting films to our festival our submission started uh last week so you can submit things to our festival uh to go to our website at info at hbff.ca Nice having you on our show. Appreciate it. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you.